Does the thought of aging contributing to feelings of depression, remorse, and anxiety? Research shows that many people, even those with seemingly enviable careers, can become dissatisfied in their jobs and life overall. Different research papers and articles represent different age ranges of when a midlife crisis generally hits. But to simplify things, let's say that midlife crisis can happen anywhere between someone in their early 30s to around 60s. Experiencing midlife or mid-career crisis is actually more common than you think. In fact, I myself have experienced it and got through it too before. The emotional turmoil some people experience during midlife doesn't always lead to major lifestyle changes that involve the desire to be young again. In fact, a midlife crisis could turn into something positive. But if you find that your midlife or mid-career crisis is negatively impacting your life, here are three strategies to help you navigate positively through this phase. 1. Missing out is unavoidable. When we look back at our lives, we conjure sometimes with relief but other times with regret. The road's not taken. Why do we feel a sense of loss about lives not lived or professions we won't pursue? even when things might be going well for us. We do so because the values realized by different choices are not the same. Worthwhile activities are worthwhile in different ways. Take a simple example. You could see a stand-up comedian tonight or go to a concert. Even if you know that the concert is the right decision for you, you still experience a small scale of loss. If the comedian is in town for only one night, you won't get to hear him or her perform. Career regret is the same phenomenon writ large. You may feel no pangs when two companies offer you similar positions and you take the one with the larger salary. But it's reasonable to experience loss when you choose a career in say IT over one in fashion, even if you are sure you made the right call. What this shows is that regret need not imply that anything is wrong. Even when outcomes are rosy, regret of a certain sort is appropriate and not something you should wish away. Regret shows that you value many activities. You would still experience it if you went into fashion instead of IT, though its focus would be different. What I've found to help myself through these moments of regret is by firstly, finding the good in my current choices instead of focusing on lost opportunities. And secondly, recognizing the lives I've touched and the good I've contributed to society through the work that I do instead of undermining myself. Thirdly, taking the time to reflect on how my life would look like if I took a different route. Would I have met the amazing people I have in my life? My husband, my daughter? Would I have experienced the same priceless moments or life lessons that I've gained? For example, moving to Germany and learning German. How sure am I that I would be happy in the other life and not regret choosing this life instead? Remind yourself that feeling you've missed out is the inevitable consequence of something good. The capacity to find worth in many walks of life. 2. Ameliorative value versus existential value. One reason for a midlife or mid-career crisis is that too much of your time is spent solving problems, putting out fires, and avoiding bad results, which is ameliorative value, instead of pursuing goals or projects with existential value, the kind that makes life worth living. Although amelioration is necessary, it brings limited satisfaction. The solution is to make time for feel-good activities, either in the office, for instance, by starting a pet project you've been putting off for years. You could revive a favorite hobby or take up a new one. This advice may seem mundane, but it has depth. Salsa dancing and stamp collecting are probably less critical than your job, but existential activities have value that ameliorative ones do not. So you have to make room for such little pleasures in your life. 3. Learning to appreciate the present. When I focus on preparing this video, for instance, I'm focusing on a goal that I have not yet achieved, which will be a memory the moment I am done. Satisfaction is always in the future or the past. No wonder the present feels empty. This is where mindfulness comes into play. I know, I know, you may roll your eyes at the mantra of living in the present, but living in the present has a clear non-metaphysical interpretation. The key is to distinguish two kinds of activities in which we engage. Projects are telic activities in that they aim at terminal states not yet achieved. These activities aim at their own annihilation. Let's say you're planning to negotiate a deal and then close it, or planning a conference and then hosting it. 
Reaching the goal brings a moment of satisfaction, but after that, it's on to the next project. Other activities are atelic, without a built-in end. Think of the difference between walking home and going for a stroll, or between putting the kids to bed and parenting. When you engage in atelic activities, you do not exhaust them, nor do they evoke the emptiness of projects for which fulfillment is always in the future or the past. Atelic activities are fully realized in the present, at work, we engage in both telic and atelic activities. Let's say, for example, you are preparing a HR report, which is telic, and brainstorming ideas with colleagues, which is atelic. Most telic work activities have meaningful atelic aspects. So going back to those earlier examples, when you're working on that deal, you're furthering your company's growth strategy. When you're hosting that conference, you're engaging industry stakeholders. So you have a choice. You can focus on either the fixed activity or the ongoing one, the project or the process. By adjusting your orientation to become less project-driven and more purpose-driven, you can defeat the sense of emptiness in the present without changing what you do or how efficiently you do it. This brings us back to the question, when is a mid-career crisis a signal to change course? as opposed to changing how you think and feel. You may be unsatisfied professionally because your job is not a good fit for your talents, because your interests have shifted, or because the prospects for promotion are poor. But your dissatisfaction may also turn on problems of regret or the self-subversion of projects that getting a new job would not address. Working through the strategies I have explored is a step towards determining which is the case. Are these strategies enough to reconcile you to the limitations of your career? If not, that is then a hint for you to consider switching tracks. Know that midlife is not too late. The mid-career crisis can be a spur to radical, vitalizing change. But even if you make that career switch, I implore you to not forget the strategies that got me through my own crisis and revived my enjoyment of work. Recognize that missing out is unavoidable, so don't try to wish it away. Understand that focusing on your blessings and the good you've done through your work is a counterweight to regret. Make room for activities with existential worth. And last but not least, remember to value the process, not just the project or the end goal.